land, shift or land, shift or land. A journey into the art and friends of Nick Shiflet, otherwise known as the Shifter, traveling from the everyday to a little insane. Shifter land, shifter land. Hello there, this is Cooking Kitty. This is uh, episode 31 of Shifterland. Episode 31 of Shifterland. And uh, I'm going to show you how to print a uh, black and white black and white photographic print in the dark room. We're in a dark room. And the whole plan here is to show anyone who, who's never uh, seen what it is to have a, a actual black and white black and white print printed and uh, you know with all this digital stuff going on I'm sure and all these uh, cell phone photographers that uh, they have no idea what it is to um, what it's like to have a black and white what it takes or what you have to do to get a uh, black and white photograph printed do it yourself you don't pay someone to do it you have to do it yourself and uh, cooking kitty that's me I know how to I know how to print black and white photograph. I think I got some gorgeous prints. I got some super gorgeous prints and um, I think we'll just start off. I'll just show you. It's actually really really simple. You just you know, there's a lot of trial and error and uh, I'm just going to show you some of the things, the basic things that you need. Uh, the main ingredients, cooking kitty. Main ingredients, get it? We're going to cook up a photograph. So um, I'll just start with, you need some chemicals. You have paper developer, paper developer and uh, that's the first thing you do is uh, uh, you slip your paper in the paper developer. Uh, and this will all be apparent. We'll go through this a little later too. I'll explain this more. But you got your paper developer and uh, all the paper. It's actually old, super old technology. That, that's no cell phones, no digital stuff. It's old. Uh, God, man. Old technology. Old, old technology. And uh, the paper, the paper has um, stuff in it. Silver. It reacts to the, um, some of the stuff that's in the paper. That uh, the photographic paper that you expose with light, it sort of reacts like. Sometimes you know when you rub yourself, and certain stuff starts happening. Well, that's the same thing that's going to happen that we're going to do to this uh, paper. We're going to rub it a little while, and stuff is going to happen to it. So after you have the developer in it to excite the little chemicals in the paper, the silver chemicals, you don't want to get too excited because if you get too excited, you're all fucked up. You end up with a black, black, or you know, you end up with a bad nothing. You end up with nothing. So well, stop. 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 This, you use these chemicals. So stop bath is going to stop the action of the developer. So after you stop it, you got your little, you got your paper, and then you put it in another solution called, uh, what's it called? Let's see here. I don't know. I don't know what I'm talking. Fixer. You, yeah, you put it in fixer. And that basically, uh, well, it's like, it's like what my parents did to me just a couple years ago. They fixed me. And what we're going to do is after we put that paper through there, we're going to fix the paper and it won't be able to produce no more. That's what happens. Fixer. So those are your three main chemicals. Three main chemicals. Super simple. You know what I like to do? This is this is how stupid I am. This is how stupid cooking kitty is. Stop bath. One of the main chemicals in photo developing. I'll put it in a red tray. Stop bath. Because in America, red means stop. Well, it means a lot of other things too. Danger and blah, 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 blah. So those are the chemicals. You need a water source. You're gonna need a water source in your dark room. This is uh, yeah. You need a water source. You're gonna need a negative. You're gonna need a negative. And uh, I am going to be printing a a photograph today. Of I know you can't see this, but uh, it's a photograph of my friend Paul Axelrod, his wife Kristen, and their son William. 
and it's on an infrared film, black and white infrared film, and don't, don't, you, every, this, this way. Oh, this way? Dumbass. Oh, yeah. Yeah, we'll okay. see if that does anything. Yeah. You can always talk, Alex, and it out. But anyway, so here's, here's the negatives that I got, and, yeah, uh, I can see. 35, we got a 35 millimeter negative here, and uh, we're gonna we're gonna enlarge this approximately to eight by 10. Uh, infrared film, uh, I don't wanna get too detailed on, you guys might get bored, I don't wanna be a geek or anything, but uh, it, it doesn't have uh, uh, the structure. God, it's too complicated. There is a structure in film that, like other, other kind of films have this super, super tight structure so that when you shine, uh, when you, when you make a print from it, and it, 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 enable, and it enables you to make a very, very large print. But uh, the information that is in negative, or uh, in, the information that is in uh, infrared film is a very loose information. And when you try to make that loose information a lot larger, it uh, actually it actually makes sense. That loose that loose information gets kind of lost. So you can't you can't really blow up infrared film too far. It, I'm not an anal photographer. I don't. I don't know. Some of you out there may be anal photographers, but uh, I'm not one of them. So you need your negative. The 35 miller negative, 35 millimeter. Here, I'm going to show you some other. Here, we got a, a slightly larger negative here called a medium format, or two and a quarter by two and a quarter. See how it's square? It's square. Whereas the 35 millimeter is a rectangle. 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 Rectangle, but this is square, two and a quarter by two and a quarter, or I think some people call it six centimeter by, I don't know, I don't know foreign stuff. I'm, I'm, I live in America. We got some other larger negatives. These guys, these are called four by four, four by five, and these are, these are uh, what you would call large, large format, four by five negative. These are things that I made in my life, you know, four, six, seven years ago, the four by five negative. When I was in that large format photography in, the, in my earlier kitty years, but you know, I don't know. Now, see, we got the king. We got the eight by 10. This is the eight by 10 super large negative. I made this negative with a cardboard box. I made this negative. It's pretty, actually pretty. Yeah, I did, yeah. It's actually pretty amazing. This negative, it's eight by 10. I made it with a cardboard box and a little tin foil, little tin foil. And uh, that's going to be a whole other show. I'm going to show anyone's interested in uh, um, pinhole photography, uh, low technology, no technology, anti anti uh, anti technology, anti cell phone, anti oh anti digital, anti digital. So another thing you're going to need. God, I'm I can't help but you know <sighs> product branding. Anyway, you need photographic paper. Anyway, that's photographic paper. You don't want to. You don't want to open that in the light. This should only be opened uh, um, in the dark. Another thing you need is you need your enlarger. You need your enlarger. When you make a print, a photographic print, what you do is you stick one of these little things, one of the negatives. You stick it in here. You put it in this little contraption right here. You put it right in there. Put it in there. You got your little holder for your negative, and then. You, well, once the light's off, you shine light through the negative down onto a piece of paper that is going to be held in this thing that is called an easel. It's called an easel. It holds your paper flat in position where you want your paper to be held. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. See there? That's there. like a little pool of light flowing yeah. into your... Yeah. Oh, yeah. Like you could yeah. drink that, you know? Well, what that is, it's a celestial heavenly body coming down to save me because I need saving... Cause I'm a bad kitty. You know, fill in some of those blanks I was talking about. Some of the blanks. Blanks. Some of the blanks. We're gonna show you some of the blanks because my mind is a blank. So we're gonna mix up some, we're gonna mix up our chemicals. We're gonna mix up our chemicals. Photographic paper, you have a leeway of margin, a huge margin of error. Everything is uh, geared towards, I don't know why, I don't know why, but everything is geared towards 68 degrees. For some reason, all these photochemicals they want you to be used at 68 degrees. It's maybe that's what the average temperature of water is across the entire world. Although I can't believe that because America is in control of everything. And uh, so it probably has something to do with America. I think the average temperature of, a, of water in America is probably 68 degrees. Because why else would all the chemicals uh, for photographic usage say that the, the optimal temperature for photographic thing is 68 degrees? So it probably has to do something with America because America is 
Oh, never mind. This is our developer, photographic paper developer. We're going to be doing, see, there it is, 68 degrees Fahrenheit. That's a conspiracy. I think America, well, this is actually a product of England, Ilford, but, you know, you know, they're probably, there are bitches. Um, what, what do we, what do we got here? Okay, we're going to be doing a, uh, a one to nine, you always, it's all about ratios. It's all about ratios. I've mentioned that before. Anyone out there who's the first person to email me about what my favorite ratio is, what it involves, if you can email me and tell me what my favorite, what my favorite ratio involves, if you email me and tell me what it is, you will win something from Cooking Kitty. The first person to email me and tell me uh, what it is that my uh, favorite ratio involves or is surrounded of. If you do that, you shall win a little prize. One to nine ratio. That means we're going to work over here with uh, England's taking over. You know, do you guys, do you guys realize that the uh, the pound or the euro is now more than the dollar? You know, we're it's not working out here. America's fucking up. We used to be top dog, and now we're just like I don't know. I don't know what kind of dog we are anymore, but we're a fucked up dog. And uh, so we're going to mix up one to nine. So one to nine, I'm going to I'm going to do 100 milliliters of this paper developer, and then that's so what I want to do is. 100 milliliters of developer and 900 milliliters of water and that's going to end up oh, you guys must be getting bored it's going to end up being a thousand it's going to be a liter all right okay so we're filling her up we're filling her up we're going to go to 1000 oh god we're almost there almost there almost there okay 1000 all right so there we go we got our developer solution i just rinsed this guy out for future use and another thing, like, like some of my, well, they're not super anal. There's just, oh, they're just a little anal. They're not super anal. It's like, they're they're not like, you know, famous photography kind of anal. Just a little bit anal. You don't, you shouldn't. Don't mix up your stuff. I put developer in here. I don't ever put anything else but developer in here. And so, or sometimes I might put water in here, but I never put anything in here developer. That way, because uh, your chemicals shouldn't be mixed up together. You don't want them to mix because, uh, you know. Sometimes, and they are the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Sometimes, according to Bob Ross, happy accidents actually do work out. But it's probably not the best to have a happy accident while you're doing the photographic process. So we got our developer there, and uh, all right, stop bath. All right, so here, man, see, but the there another another ratio. See, it's a whole. God, I I know some people get. I don't, I don't know. You. See, the ratio here is uh, what does it say? Uh, 16 milliliters per liter so that's a tiny see what I do is I just pour this is I just pour this in here just a tiny I guess what I'm trying to say is that I mix my stop bath a little strong just like I mix my hint hint my gin and tonics a little strong so so what I, what I do is actually I lied I lied I actually reused this to fill up a thousand milliliters of water I lied that's another thing I'm an excellent liar. I love to lie. I got some friends that lie. I have some friends that are like they lie so much. I don't. I don't even know why I'm friends with them. I don't even just like. I can't believe. I can't believe one word they say. One word. Okay. So, man, seems like this is taking a long time. So you just. And then what I do is I just take a little bit of. I just rinse this out a little bit. Just, just and get some of those residues of that chemical and I just get them right in there just put them right back in there get them right. we're, what we're gonna do is we're gonna expose photographic paper over in the enlarger we're gonna bring the paper over here we're gonna put it in the developer the developer is gonna stimulate uh, well here let me pack back a little bit when we put the photographic paper in the dark in the uh, larger we're gonna shine light onto it through the negative I gotta talk about the negative too. That's an important. That's like I don't know what part's more important. You got the negative. We're gonna shine light through that, and then that light is gonna end up on the paper. And when we bring that paper over here, the parts of the paper that got different variations of light that shown through the negative are going to uh, they're gonna be excited. There's uh, there's chemicals in the paper. There's chemicals in here. They're gonna like they're gonna start doing a little dance. And uh, the amount, of, how much they dance depends on how much light they receive, and I'll explain that a little later. 
there's like there's some parts of the negatives are going to be uh, it's a negative some parts of the negative are clear so when the light shines through it it a lot of light goes down into the paper and then when we put that paper in here this stuff is going to really go to town on those parts that got a lot of light so it's going to be black all right our ratio for the rapid fixer is one to four i believe one to four one to four 0.5 liter of this 500 milliliters right here we're going to add that to uh 2000 milliliters that will be 2.5 milliliters so yeah here i am filling up my pathetic squished bottle with uh oh geez i know some people would never do this look at this same same vehicle same vehicle mixing up chemicals left and right i got some it's called cross contamination cross contamination a lot of photographers out there that will make a beautiful perfect print i am not one of them i am interested in making art there's i mean part of the reason is i'm jealous because i don't got the brain i do not have the brain to uh i don't know just i got i barely got enough brain power to mix these chemicals up but what i'm trying to say is that i don't have enough brain power to um to uh, make a perfect print. I just don't have it. It's not in me. It's not in me. And What is a perfect print? What perfect are you talking print, about? Uh, here, let me pour this in here so that it doesn't fall over. A perfect print is, well, I mean, it, God, there's not even enough room. A perfect print has a, God, I hate all these. See, there's all these angel photographers with all these terms. A wide latitude of tonal ranges. And to the layman, that means that uh, that the print has this like succulent just range of tones from light to a light middle gray to a nearly middle gray to a middle gray to a slightly darker middle gray and to a medium darker darker gray and then to your dark dark gray and then to the darkest gray and then into a whole nother range of blacks. That would be a very luminous voluminous very very wide ranging print i don't have that kind of skill i'm not, I'm not interested in that because that's not who i am i got some i got some i got some uh, some of my sisters some of my brothers siamese siamese kitty cats they make those kind of prints this is what i think of siamese cats <laughs> siamese cats this like they make all these prints and like they can fuck off siamese cats is like they make all these huge, huge prints, and they are so beautiful, but they leave me empty. They're impersonable. They're like, they, like, they don't even like their owners. They bite their owners. They scratch their owners. They can, like, who? They're like, they're finicky. They're finicky. Siamese cats. They're finicky. And they make these beautiful, beautiful, boring prints. <laughs> All right, we got all our chemicals going up. All right, so just guys, that's this, that's this water. So, all right, so what you want to do, oh, oh. All right, so while you're making your prints, uh, you want to have a little, some sort of something or other to hold your prints in. Uh, while you're in the process of making silver print, we're going to make one print today, but normally I'll make anywhere, depending on my success level, I'll make anywhere from three to ten prints. Sometimes I super kick ass, and, uh, you know, sometimes I fuck up and suck. That's a rhyme. So anyway, that's that. I put my, uh, well, yeah, after we process prints, we put them in there, and then they'll sit in there during the whole printing session, and then at the end of the session, I'll show you what we do with those prints. They need to be rinsed of all these nasty chemicals. They need to just like, just like I lick myself every night, keep myself clean, use my hands, my furs, my paws, just like I got to keep myself clean, just like you guys keep yourselves clean. After we're all done applying all these nasty stuff to the paper, we're going to put them in this little thing here. And they're going to sit in there while we do more and more prints. And then we're all done. We're going to take those and then we're going to rinse them. So we got our chemicals. We got our negative. And we got our enlarger. 
Um, okay. Um, I guess we could just start. I don't know. All right. This is Cooking Kitty. This is episode uh, 31 of Shifterland, and we're going to make a photographic print. This stuff, I love, I live for this stuff. I, you know, I, sometimes, like, I'm telling you, that just the act of creating something is so cool. Like, I mean, you just, you're, it's, it's like a little bit of alchemy, like turning gold into lead or lead into gold or, I don't know, or turning coal into gin and tonics. I love turning coal into gin and tonics. That's the best little trick. What we're doing here today is turning coal, that black stuff, that Santa Claus leaves in your uh, stocking, we're turning coal into gin and tonics. You got your enlarger, you got your easel. This, this guy goes, and uh, you got your enlarger. Got your timer. This is, your enlarger has a light, it has a light that shines down through this large cylinder thing. It's like, kind of like a telescope. It's just a lens. They call it a condenser. I guess it condenses light. It moves light like there's a scattering of light. Imagine imagine a bunch of drunk drivers. Imagine everybody was on the road drunk. The chaos that would be happening, like if every other, if every person, like literally, if every person was above the legal limit, if every single person, the chaos that would ensue, that would be what's happening here. There's all this chaos. Now imagine that every single person on the road is sober. That's what's happening. We have chaos. Light, the light here is in chaos. And this thing right here brings the light and directs it into a sober, straight, linear kind of activity. And that enables us to uh, create a photographic print. That's what the enlarger is. The enlarger is all about organizing light, uh, the manipulation of light through a negative. That's what enlarger is all about. So, this guy right here, can you see that? I don't know. This is a um, negative carrier. This is what we use to hold the negative. So we got a, I already, I already picked out a negative, you know, I, you know, I already picked out a negative that I want to do earlier. It's, it's a family shot, beautiful family shot of Paul Axelrod, Kristen, and uh, William, and, uh, and I hear that they're having a second kid. I don't know. They might have it right now. I don't know. Pretty soon. Pretty soon. A lot of people do um, contact prints where they do... Oh, here. Here's a contact print. Like some people, what they do and they, to decide what kind of... What, what negative they're going to print. They make little... They make little... Little prints of each little negative. And then they look at those. But... I don't need to do that. I look at the negatives. And I say, I like this one. I don't do this. I don't do this. I don't do this. Some people say I'm dumb. And, and I, well, I don't want to tell you what I tell them. Okay, so we're going to put our negative into the enlarger. And we're going to shine some light through it. There's a lot of hairs on your lens up there. Oh, no, oh, oh, you... That's part of the character which you speak? Those, those hairs are not going to be involved in it at all. I'm telling you, nothing. But, he does speak of one point. You don't want any, those hairs, where are the hairs? Right here? Yep. Oh, yeah, that's fine. That's totally fine. Nothing, but this, I'll do, I haven't done that, I haven't done that in five years. That hair's been there for five years. It's part of my magic. I'm just going to be a fucked up print. You ruined it. My magic's all gone. Anyway, the important part is you don't want any dust on the negative. Because that stuff, I mean, well, to some professionals, to some anal professionals, that dust might have done something. To me, I don't care. I don't care about that dust. But you don't want any dust on your negative. That's the important part. So you just, you know, whatever you got, some compressed air. Sometimes, you know, I use my tail. You know, you know, a wet rag, whatever you got. I know something, cotton balls, Easter eggs, something, bunny rabbits. Uh, you have to go through a, a litany, a little process of figuring out how much time to uh, give your uh, give your paper. So what this does, this is a little like a very super manual, like older school timer. And so you just move around like this is going to be one 
that's gonna be uh, that's well that's gonna be one second two second two seconds and then you move that and oh there's, there you go we're counting down right now we're set for 11 seconds and it's beeping it's beeping for every second all um, right I'm just warning everybody out there in shifter land our adjacent shifter land crew that something strange is about to happen your television is not malfunctioning <coughs> ready <laughs> Let's go. Okay, you got your uh, you got your larger, and it allows you to shine your light down onto your photographic paper. And so here, oh, see, you got your lens, just like on your camera. You go through your f-stops. You can get brighter, and you can get darker. And uh, the smaller, the smaller, the hole, the the less light goes through, and the more. Uh, but I usually go on about a f8 or f11 because I'm not some sort of super hardcore like an anal Siamese kitty cat kind of person that just wants the most perfect, perfect, per, perfect print. I stick a little piece of paper onto the enlarger and then I focus. I use that to focus. There's a uh, dial on your enlarger that allows you to bring the negatives up and down until it gets in the most best position to be in focus. I just do it manually. Just recheck it. Just you know, just constantly recheck your focus just to make sure everything's all nice and sharp. So I got a pretty good focus right there. I got my focus down. I'm gonna do a burn an F11. And so what I do is I just uh, there's a thing called a test strip. The test strip is where you uh, you want to turn your light off and you get your paper. You always want to. You can never ever ever have any of the light on. There's hey, this is a safe light. This, this light allows, uh, amber. Uh, uh, it's a kind of amber-ish light, and it, it, it allows you to see in the dark room, but it doesn't affect the uh, light that is on the uh, photographic paper. It's a darkroom light. It's basically a darkroom light, and it allows you to operate in the darkroom. So a test strip, what you do a test strip is you just, I don't know, I just cheap, I just use a little bit of a test strip, a little bit of piece of paper. Ba test strip is kind of self-explanatory. You just do a sort of a... Uh, exploratory you want to you got to do an exploratory test to uh, see how much to expose to paper I usually just start off at 10 seconds I expose my paper for 10 seconds and so we're gonna do that right now we're just gonna go 10 seconds we're gonna do it do it we're gonna do it one two three four five six seven eight nine ten so that gave my whole piece of paper, my test strip, a 10 second exposure. So then what you're gonna what we're gonna do after that is we're gonna we're gonna give different sections of the paper uh, different levels of exposure. So this little piece of paper is gonna have a range of exposure from 10 seconds to 30 seconds. So we're just you just there's two seconds. Four seconds, six seconds, eight seconds. Oh, I skipped one. Anyway, so now we're, what you do is you take your little test strip with your experimental amounts of exposure over into your into your developer, and whatever you what you do basically. It's about 90 seconds exposure, but for a test trips, I sort of sheet. This paper is having a relationship with the silver, I mean the developer. I can see a little bit of action. There's, basically, it's what happens when I rub myself, like I said to you guys earlier. The developer, the chemicals in this developer are reacting to the minerals, the minerals and the, uh, I guess it's not minerals, what is it, uh, just like uh, elements, elements, silver, are reacting to the silver in this paper. So you just do that, you do that, and it's like all the places, the, all the, the diff different areas of the negative are darker and lighter, and so uh, different amounts of light come through the negative and go onto the paper. And so what's happening is this developer is reacting to the different amounts of light that were shown, or, you know, uh, shown, that's, I don't know, is that proper English shown? So anyway, you just, you just... I know I'm pretty sloppy. I just go, I just do it for a certain amount of time, and then you go over here into your stop bath that I mentioned earlier, and that's going to stop the action of the developer. So the relationship that the developer was having with the piece of paper is going to be stopped.
by the stop bath. It's a bath. Bath. So anyway, uh, you, uh, oh yeah, see, we're getting something. The stop bath has had plenty of time to uh, activate and stop the developer. So then you go to your third chemical, which is called a fixer. And the fixer is going to just arrest, make it so that the paper becomes no longer light sensitive. So basically, I can see from what I've done that I need to expose my paper at 10, 12, probably around 18 to 16 seconds. 18 to 16 seconds. It's going to maybe give us a, in the contrast, I like, I, the, that's can a whole other. Can you point out to the audience how magical this whole process was? You just dip that paper into that chemical over there and bam. There you go. Well, that's Look at that's the, magic, the the ghostly magic. That's the beautiful part about the whole thing. The, um, uh, Stanford's right. You got you just you have a little piece of of acetate, a little plastic that's your negative, and you have some paper here, a little paper that has some chemicals on it. You just try dipping your digital camera in a, a fluid bath and see what happens. If you were to put your digital camera in this bath, I'll guarantee you will not have these results whatsoever. Not at all. There's no way. It's impossible. Digital camera is all about instant gratification. This is not about instant gratification. This is delayed gratification. That's what we're talking about here. And who's to say which one's better? I'd say delayed gratification could perhaps be superior. What do you think, Cook and Kitty? Cook and Kitty says that my entire life is based on delayed gratification. All right. So basically what this tells me is we got to do our print from around 16 to 18 seconds. This is a little flat. You can't, you guys probably can't see this. I don't know. But uh, the contrast is a little flat. We got to pump up. We got to make it a little more dramatic. So, all right. Okay. All right. So being in the dark room is a constant, a constant struggle between the forces of uh, Darth Vader and uh, the rebel forces. The con the, it's the constant uh, fight between light and dark. So anyway. There's a, that variable contrast thing I was talking about. I'm just going to go with it. We're going to see. Sometimes I don't even know what I'm doing. We're going we're gonna to just make a print. We're going to make a print right here. I'm just going to go for it. We're going to set her up for uh, 16. We're going to set her up for 17 seconds. 17 seconds. We're just going to go for it. And then there's another thing called dodging. Well, yeah. Well, I'll explain that a little bit. All right. So we're going to do a 17 second exposure here. It's going to be... I think actually, it's, I think I got a good, I got face. Like, let me see here. Let's have to see that's This is going to be all. Geez, we could. That part's going to be all dark right there. We don't need. We don't need all that. That's going to be all dark. Oh gosh, see. Yeah. I should explain that a little bit earlier. So we got a 17 second exposure here, and uh, also, let's see here. You make use of a timer. If you got a timer, a stopwatch, or a little clock, that's helpful. Some areas, some areas of uh, the print of, of this particular negative are lighter and darker than others, and uh, you don't want you don't want some parts to be so black and some parts to be so white. So sometimes you need to add more light to certain areas of a print. That's called burning, where you add more light. It's like if you were like, well, you know, I don't get sunburnt, but if humans, like if humans were laying out in the sun at the beach and they would burn the more the more light you get the more sunshine that those humans on that little tender 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 succulent flesh that they have the more light they get on there they get burnt 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 so that's called burning the more light so sometimes some areas of the negative you, or the print you need to add more light to that's called burning in and sometimes there's areas that are uh, need way way less light and that is that's like like you're at the beach and you don't want to get burnt, so you go in the shade. And so that's called uh, dodging. You're dodging the sun. I don't know. That's pretty straightforward, I guess. Series of chemicals. You want to give a little bit of a drain because you don't want to. You don't want to. You don't want a bunch of excess chemicals all mixing up with each other. So, you know, and with prints, you know, unless you're some sort of like anal Siamese kitty cat, you got a. You got a actually a pretty large margin of error for your timing. You know, but. If you start getting into some other fine, fine prints and stuff, 
it's a little tougher but what I do there's pretty much you got a you got a pretty good margin of error just like you know oh yeah see yeah I can already tell that uh, yeah I can tell that we're gonna need to work we're gonna I can already tell in this dark light that certain portions of this print need more light Let's see what it looks like well I gotta put in the fixer just you hold on there because I'm a dyslexic kitty cat I meant that when I said 18 seconds I meant really 28 because my exposure was from 10 seconds to 30 but I was thinking in my brain it was 10 to 20 so it's just it's just one of those dyslexic moments that my uh, we're gonna go for 26 seconds here that's and I'm gonna 26 seconds I'm gonna keep some of the light I'm gonna hide some of the light from certain areas because they're they're just uh, they're too dark here's there's too much light coming through. What do you call this? Well, this part right here is the dodging. Wand. Just imagine, just imagine you're at the beach and you're in your bikini. Have you been working out? What? Have you been working out? Oh no, I don't work out, I just drink. Oh, just wandering. Oh no, I work out a little bit. But you're, if you're at the beach and you're in your bikini and you're slathering on your suntan lotion, already you're afraid of the sun, and then all you're just too hot, you're too bright, and you go into the shade. That's dodging what I just did on that print is uh, Stan suggested that uh, it's too much light it's gonna get too dark oh yeah see now yeah oh man yeah something's happening oh yeah Siamese cats are so fucking anal it's like they're gonna blow your mind fidgety 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 oh see man there's there is potential see that I would have got this print right on the first try except for that I'm dyslexic we'll see it happens we'll see it happens it's, I'm very, very close. I can, like, you get used to judging. You can, you get used to judging. You get a little excited because you can kind of judge in this dark room amber. Well, I don't know if it's amber. It's probably not amber to you right now. But I, you can judge. I can judge what, uh, uh, how the prints are doing in the dark. And you want to, it's good to drain, good to drain, drain your paper, drain your, uh, the photograph in each little vessel. These guys don't need to mix up, you know, you know, like, it's kind of like, it's kind of like how, I don't know. It's kind of like how President Bush wants to build a wall all around all of our borders down there in Mexico. No mixing up. What you want to do is you don't want you don't want any of your chemicals mixing up. Just like George Bush. That's right. No chemical mixing up. All right. Well, let's just check this guy out. See what happens. Oh, oh that's beautiful. Yeah, yeah. It's weird. It's, I wonder. Look at that little. There's this weird little light. Weird. I wonder if that was that. Anyway, it's pretty amazing. We've just all we've done is just screw around with a few liquids, and uh, you know, a little bit of light, and you, you've got this photographic thing. I mean, it's the most. It's super basic. I mean, it's. I mean, there's a lot of you can extrapolate and go on and make it more and more and more. You can make it as complicated as you want to get, but in in truth, it's super simple. It's just like you get a few of these chemicals, you mix them up, and then you uh, shine a little bit of light on on some paper. You know, kind of smoosh it around in the uh, in the chemicals for a while, and you got yourself a photographic print. It's I don't know. I find it truly amazing. Actually, I can't even express uh, the time. Sometimes when I'm in the dark room, uh, usually I'm alone, and uh, how just uh, how awesome it is just to be doing it. Because it's like, wow, look what's happening. Something's happening. You're doing something, and it's like it's sort of like some sort of weird. I don't know. Uh, chemistry magical chemistry kind of thing anyway I'm not totally satisfied with this um, I would like I like I think I'm gonna I would like the contrast to be just a touch a touch a little bit more just a, I'm what, curious what do you mean by contrast contrast explicitly is that dark area is super super dark and that's actually fine it's in the background but we have this light area right here that is super 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 light and uh, you know in essence if I if I made the contrast more it, may, it might be it might not work out because maybe if I did a 29 second exposure I might be satisfied let's try that out let's see what happens so we're gonna that first exposure was 26 seconds we're gonna do 29 seconds now because uh, I just I just I did oh, I was unsatisfied with that look. I didn't like that at all. Something something about it is troublesome. You know, sometimes... I thought it looked good. Oh. 
Sometimes, uh, well, yeah, sometimes... Uh, that's part of the beauty of the artistic process is you just got to push yourself. That's what you're doing right now. You're pushing yourself to do better. <laughs> I don't I'm, it's, I don't even push myself. I am... It's, that's, that's like 24-7. I'm constantly pushing to do better 24-7 it's not even a well some kiddies would have just said you know what that's a per that's a beautiful print a perfect oh print. that's man that, that but this print. kitty this kitty says I can do better I can do better that's what this kitty always says I that, can do better that that, that and that, he uh, does there's something there's something there was something wrong with that print it didn't it didn't have the the quality the, the what do you call that the uh, seal of approval of cooking kitty that's, oh, that's, all right, there we got our little timer. Got a little timer going. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Anyway, got a little timer. Let's see what happens. What I did is I gave this exposure a few more seconds. It's super subtle. Super subtle. And there is, the weird thing is that once you get in the dark room, I can uh, impress or implore or talk about enough about this, is that, uh, um, there's a lot of there's a huge gray area. It, it's open to interpretation. It's all it's all up for personal interpretation. When you're in the dark room printing prints, it's like one person might say that's stupid. That's totally totally stupid. And then another person might say, oh man, that looks great. See, this is getting this is getting to this in the darkness. This looks a little bit more like how uh, Cooking Kitty likes his prints. Yeah, this might be edible. I think I might be able to live on this. I think this is. This, this might is, be a little kitty treat. Yeah, this might. Yeah, this might be a little bit of, of a little bit of a nibble, a little bit of a, something that I could take a bite of. This is something that I might be able to feel. This is something that might do something to me. This is something that might rearrange my brain chemistry. Because when I this I mean, one's got a good sniff. Yeah, it does actually have a good sniff. You know, a, a lot of times. You, Sometimes you just can't explain things any other way except they just have a good sniff. They give you a little tingle. Well, sometimes that tingle and that sniff can be er erroneous and mistaken. You go through this process, and, you, and then you turn the lights on, and like, like, because there's so much interpretation, so much gray area in making a photograph. But I got, I got a lot of confidence about this print. It's like, I'm feeling pretty good about it right now, actually. I don't. We'll see what happens when I turn the light. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see what happens. Often, often I get excited. You know, it's there, it's a whole range of excitement. Like it's like I, only, I there the the graduations, the levels of excitement are I cannot even explain because sometimes the excitement is like super super quick and short lived. Like right now, I'm excited because I think that this print is actually going to work, and I'll be super excited and I'll look at it. But then, like you know, tomorrow I'll come and look at this print and I'll say, oh, why was I so excited? Like it's 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 very deceiving. It's just tough. But see, I can tell. Oh man, see, now see with the proper exposure, I can tell that maybe the, the dark parts beneath, behind in the background, did actually need a little bit of. Uh, they got too much sun. We'll see it happens. Okay, here we go. Oh yeah, see, I like this a lot better. I like that. That one, yeah, I could actually live with that. Yeah, I could. Oh yeah, yeah. See, it might. Put yeah. Back in the water. Yeah. It's a little, see, this is, it's so subtle. Everything is so subtle. These little areas, these little areas back here, they could use a little bit more light. You mean you might want to dodge the, the little sh shadowy tree areas? Yeah, that shadow, so that's a little more definition. Yeah, yeah. You just, working in those yeah, shadows? Yeah. But on the other hand. They look good. You like how they look? Some people, the people? Yeah. Yeah, I'm still, they, they're okay. There's something about it that is still slightly bothersome to me. See, to me, they're a little overdone now. A little overdone? Yeah. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. The crust is a little dark. Yeah. 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 It's set it down. Just just a hair, just a little. Yeah. Yeah. Well, here here's what I want to do. Well, then see, I got these two prints and I can compare and contrast. I can I got I got my 26 second print and I got my 29 second print. And and I'm I'm, I'm kind of agreeing with Stan that maybe the 22nd print is actually going to be work actually a little better. 
26, 27. All right, well, let's just do one more. Let's just do one more and try one for uh, 20. See, this is this is where uh, this is where. What are you thinking right now? What's what, what's going on here? Well, it's it's tough. It's t it's like like I like I like how the people look here. So I just I need to have the background needs a little bit less light. You want it to be as as perfect as you think you can get it. Neither of these is as perfect as I would like it to be. What, maybe you're, I, what you're saying is you're a tortured kitty. Maybe I am. Maybe I am a Simon. It's, you're a tortured kitty. Absolutely. Yeah. These little filters. These, these are little guys that alter the uh, alter the quality of light that is reaching the photographic paper. I'll just leave it at that. And. Uh, Interesting to note here that the man on the street would probably determine that one or either of those two photos was excellent. But well, here we, we have the driven kitty. Kitty's driven to reach the perfect print in his own way. Maybe I am a perfectionist. It, I think it, it begs the question, what is perfection? Is alter the contrast of this photo. So what I'm hoping to do is to make the, the people in this photograph, I'm hoping to make them pop out a little bit more and make the background more darker, but not so dark that you can't see it. So it's just pure black. Hey, I'm say, the master the of the pop, pop out. out. He can the screw pop off. Out. Ansel can Adams screw is the master of the pop out. He can screw off, man. I've changed uh, the contrast level that this paper was exposed at. It's altering the ratio of relationships to the light and dark areas of the photograph. Oh yeah, see, I got, see, actually, I think, oh, oh yeah, see, this is going to be too contrasty, too contrasty, well, we'll see what happens. Well, you know, I'm not super, you're not enamored of that one I'm not either? super enamored, but you know, it is, I want to do one more print, I want to do one more print. After a while, the old uh, uh, photographic computer that's rest inside right in here. See, this whole thing is you go along and you do stuff and it just adds knowledge. You just add knowledge. You you use you, you learn a few you learn a few bits of information and then you use those few bits of information to continue on to create something that you think might be exciting, which might be wonderful. You um yeah, you use information that you uh, that you create and you make adjustments on that information to create better information that you had just created. And so that's what I'm hoping to do right now. I think I may have found a solution to my problems. So we're gonna, I've lowered the contrast a little bit. All right, I, I, I think I know what to do. Okay, I just needed a little reminder. I just needed a little reminder. So just, uh, we're gonna do, uh, we're gonna do this guy. We lowered the contrast. And uh, instead of the 26 seconds, we're gonna go all the way down to uh, 20 seconds. And uh, that's only six seconds, but I think the difference is going to be incredible. We'll see what happens. We'll see what happens. 20, 20 seconds. That was uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. Oh. Well, the computer's counting for me, so. So we'll, we'll see what happens here. I don't know. I don't. I don't have a lot of I don't have a lot of faith uh, right now. It's all trial and error for me. I mean, no, I'm not a perfectionist. I mean, I want to make. Well, I don't know. Maybe I am. I just want to. I just want to make my prints as as best as that I can make them with my skill ability. Well, I just want to make prints that like that kick ass. Basically, I'm interested about kicking ass. That's the only thing that this kitty wants to do. So anyway, I don't know. I maybe. Oh yeah. See, I horribly or horribly miscalculated on this one. Did something wrong. Another lack of focus. But see? if you keep that exposure in mind, you could do the next one with that exposure, with, yeah. and then do this the way that was working better earlier. Yeah, that would be uh, 20 seconds for the background and 26 for the foreground. 
so you better get a job well done. Oh, God damn it. We're gonna expose our print for 20 seconds. And then what I'm gonna do is expose more parts of the print for six more seconds. That would be the, uh, the burning part. The part I was referring to people in bikinis. And they might be high cut bikinis, really high cut and like pink and blue or something. I don't know, fluorescent, one piece. Like say you're at the beach and you got a pink and blue uh, fluorescent, really, really high cut bikini. Or not bikini, one piece, one piece. And uh, so, and you want more sun? Well, we're, what we're gonna do is we are gonna keep some of the sun from part of the photograph and we're gonna add more sun to other parts of the photograph. So to start off with, we're gonna give 20 seconds of sun to the entire photograph. The entire photograph is getting 20 seconds of sun. Some areas are gonna get a little bit less than 20 seconds. They're sensitive areas. Areas high up on the hip, I don't know. You know, you can't be, I mean, if you got white flesh, you can't be having it. So now, we got other areas that need another, well, another six second exposures is uh, I'll get my uh, hands in place to uh, guide the light to give certain areas roughly six more seconds. And so that's what I will do right now. So I count to four, one, two, three, four, and then I give, use my hands to give certain areas more exposure. That's what you would call a, I don't know, that's a, that was burning, burning. Adding more light to those areas where the, uh, the bikini rides way up high, so you need a little bit more sunlight there. I know, this is, this is kind of one of the, one there, I don't feel confident whatsoever right now. I, I, no, no, no confidence whatsoever. I feel sort of ambivalent. I mean, I hope something happens here, but I don't feel like it's a given that we're gonna actually hand, end up with something that is uh, usable. At points, sometimes when you're in the dark room, well, a room that's dark, at some point, on and off, several times, you basically lose all perspective. Assuming, just by chance, that this uh, photograph actually is how I want it to be, well, after we're done, uh, we just have to rinse it. Rinse it uh, in water for, in running water, four minutes. We gotta rinse this for four minutes from, to get rid of uh, all the chemicals. Well, that is definitely the best thing we've got. So that might be it. Yeah, that's that's probably it. We're done. Our job's done here. We got our one print. I don't think this is a masterpiece. I think it's a well-printed photograph. So basically, the the last step, we're gonna wanna, we're gonna run, we're gonna rinse that uh, the, those photographs for about four minutes. If if I got a lot of photographs, I rinse them for longer because uh, I don't know. It just seems like they take up so much space in the tray. But yeah, four minutes is. Uh, what we want to do. You want to flip through the photographs while they're rinsing in the tray. Flip through them so each photograph can have its chance to have uh, fresh water running over it. And then periodically when the tray fills with water, dump it back out, refill it back up, and then continue the process for four minutes. Right there, and we're gonna put that on the grill, we're gonna cook her up, and we're gonna eat it. All right, I'm, uh, I'm sorry if I didn't explain. I, uh, hopefully you guys all understand what it's like to do a black and white photograph. Um, I might have skipped on some parts, but uh, you guys got the basic thing. It's the, the thing that I, the thing that bothers me is I didn't share with you how magical making a photographic print is. It's like I, I couldn't, I can't, I couldn't share that with you and explain how to do it at the same time. But making a photographic print is, it's super, 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 super duper, kitty magical, magical stuff to be working with. It's super awesome. Anyway, so we're gonna have a little meal now. That's it. That's uh episode uh, 31 episode 31 of uh, cooking kitty or uh, shifterland this is uh, the end of the episode uh, episode 31 for shifterland cooking kitties how to print a black and white photograph we're going to eat now barbecue as a reward for our hard work